What is up you guys? It's Ashling. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome, welcome. Come on in. In today's video I'm going to be doing a topic that is very close to my heart and it is a video all on products you do not need to buy more of. I promise you, you have enough of them. I swear, I promise. And this is kind of a little note to myself as well because I was decluttering makeup over Christmas and I'm still doing it currently and I was like, dear God, girl, stop buying those because you're just decluttering them. I have five things I want to talk about today, but realistically I could probably do 10, but I just don't want this video to be ridiculously long because I, I have like a backstory to every product that I want to talk about today. Anyway, if you guys are not already subscribed, please do click the subscribe button down below and thumbs up this video if you do like these videos because I'm going to start doing a bit more of these type of videos in the future. I want to do like kind of more of like delving into the thoughts behind why we purchase things or why we get things or kind of like our feelings on like influencers and stuff like that. Things that I talk about with my friends and my sister and stuff like that in regards to like makeup and the things that we buy. So just so I don't go on too much of a rant of everything written down here and I'm gonna start with eyeshadow palette. I don't buy makeup because I need something. I buy makeup because I want it and I think a lot of you guys are kind of the same. The evolution of eyeshadow palettes definitely started with the single shadow. I remember back in the day going into MAC, spending about 12 euro to 15 euro on a single eyeshadow. I have a couple of MAC palettes, like some I've decluttered but some I still have and the thoughts of the fact that I had spent 15 euro per pan. That kind of makes me a little bit sick. But then I had an introduction to a brand called Inglot, which I absolutely loved. They did single eyeshadows for six euro, which was a little bit more affordable. Definitely more in my price range. As a student, I wasn't able to afford anything more than six euro and I probably only bought one eyeshadow maybe a month because I just couldn't afford it. I was a student, I was broke, I was in college eating noodles, you know, what else do you do? <laughs> and then we had more affordable single eyeshadows with Makeup Geek, which was great. Makeup Geek was like bomb back in like 2013, 2014, I wanna say. I had so many of the eyeshadows, they were great. We had a bit of an evolution then with the Naked palettes where about 500 million of them came out, but we all needed all of them because they were like, covetous and they were like the first neutral palette with everything laid out after the 88 palettes and after like the coastal sense palettes and stuff this was kind of like a laid out palette but it was like full of shimmers and i put all those bad boys on my eye and then we had the cheaper eyeshadow palettes that came out with morphe where you had 32 to 48 eyeshadows in a big palette and you probably never used the majority of them. You might have only used maybe one or two. They were overwhelming, especially to the layperson like myself. I'm not a makeup artist. I don't do makeup on other people. I just have one face, two eyeballs. I can't really use too many colors to be fair and I kind of always stick with my neutrals like what I'm wearing today I like a neutral eye and I keep going back to the neutral eye so a full eyeshadow with like a ton of different blues or a ton of different greens or a ton of different purples even though I actually love purples but like a ton of different colorful eyeshadows was appealing to me but I never used them so they kind of just sat around there. And then ABH came out with the Modern Renaissance palette. Like a moment in time that we all kind of remember was like one of the most iconic eyeshadow palettes. And they ran with that. Oh yeah, they did. They pumped out eyeshadow palettes after eyeshadow palettes. I think they brought out maybe four eyeshadow palettes. Like that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's so many eyeshadow palettes. If you're gonna buy them, that's 200 euro just for one brand. And we all do it. We run to the store where we run to Beauty Bay or Cult Beauty or wherever we're buying our makeup from and we will order that new eyeshadow palette even though we already just bought the most recent release from that brand, but we're gonna keep buying all their eyeshadow palettes because they need them all. And I feel like it's the same with Huda Beauty's palettes as well. Like we go and buy the Huda Beauty palettes because we need them all in the newest release. And you feel like your old Huda Beauty palette or your old Anastasia palette or your old Too Faced palette is kind of outdated and no one talks about it anymore because we've got this new hot topic. I feel like with all that being said, you guys can probably go to your makeup drawer and look and see how many eyeshadow palettes you have. How many do you actually wear of them? Like how many of those palettes do you reach for? Because I know myself personally, I have one, two, three eyeshadow palettes here beside me and they're probably the ones that I go to the most. The most used eyeshadow palette that I have is my Soft Glam palette. I absolutely adore this. 
The second one currently would be my KVD Lolita Por Vida palette. And then the third palette that I get the most use out of would have to be the Jaclyn Hill palette. Nine times out of 10, I will get everything I want from this one palette or my Soft Glam or the Lolita Por Vida palette, which I love. But I kid you not guys, when I say I have roughly around 100 eyeshadow palettes, that is no lie. I am doing a massive declutter of eyeshadow palettes and it's coming up really, really soon. I just need to kind of get them all together in one group. It's a time consuming thing and I'm not gonna lie, I do, they do have a hold on me, a lot of them do and I'm gonna struggle to declutter some of them so I'm gonna have to be really cutthroat with that. Do you need more eyeshadow palettes? Kind of look at your collection and see what you actually have. I'm I'm being real like stickler here because I feel like in February I'm gonna really implement this. I am gonna go on a no buy for February. I'm gonna try my best, but I'm gonna go on a no buy. It's very difficult when you have a beauty channel to go on a no buy because you're channel relies on you reviewing new things but I'm gonna go on a no buy other than things again in PR which I've kind of like talk, took myself off a lot of PR other than ones that I really 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 like but some that I was just getting a lot of PR from and I was just finding that I wasn't using it I've taken myself off those but other than PR I'm gonna try and not buy anything in the whole month of February and just use what I have in my collection already and do looks with what I already have like today's look I created using all Inglot products that I already own and the only reason that I I'm not using them is because the new hot palette has come out and I feel the need to have to buy it. Anyway, let's move on. The next product I feel like you don't need to buy any more of is highlighters. How many highlighters do you have in your collection? Seriously, realistically, think about it. I definitely myself have well over 30, maybe 40 highlighters. I have decluttered a ton of them in the last year. I did a massive highlighter declutter. I wanna say about 12 months ago and I got rid of a huge quantity of them, but I still have tons left in my collection. Some that I hang on to because they're limited edition or you can't get them anymore or they just look pretty and I'm just like, can't declutter that. But they all look the same on your cheeks. They realistically look the same. And I've gone to the stage where I'm not even wearing highlighter anymore. So today is an exception. I just don't really reach for it anymore. It's just not the look that I go for lately. And unless I'm going on a night out, it's just not what I wear in my everyday makeup. I feel like there was a day when it was just the Bomb Mary Luminizer, Soft and Gentle from MAC or Global Glow, depending on your depth of your skin. Laura Geller Gilded Honey and probably High Beam from Benefit which was a liquid highlighter which is kind of different from the rest. But I feel like that was it. Like when I think of highlighters back in the day I probably only had those four. I definitely only had those four. I've since decluttered a High Beam but I feel like the other three I still dip into every now and again. Soft and gentle maybe not as much because it's a bit too glittery but if I do want a highlighter Mary Luminizer is still on the go. I still have it. But now you can get liquid and cream and body highlighters. There's just so many of them. Jeffree Star bought out like three random coloured ones. There was like a black, a pink and a blue. They were insane. There's like unicorn highlighters, duochrome highlighters. There's ones with purple ships and blue ships and green ships. There's just so many of them and I just feel like it's a bit overwhelming and a bit like wow let's like tone it back I feel like realistically for myself maybe not you you might want to continue buying highlighters but I mean go for it but I feel like for myself I have enough highlighters in my collection I know that highlighters are kind of like a thing that we all get very excited over like when they're released I know like when those unicorn highlighters came out like they were so massive everyone went crazy for them then there was like the full face of highlighter challenge so people like went out and bought loads of highlighters to do that and like incorporate that into like a look on YouTube. We all just went crazy for so many different highlighters and I just kind of think about it right now and I'm like I don't even use any of those highlighters. There is one highlighter that I go with and it is from Morphe and it's Sparks highlighter. It's a really nice shade and realistically you wouldn't even know what highlighter that is. You just wouldn't. I just feel like the highlighters have blown up. Like Becca's Champagne Pop. Oh my God, everyone went crazy for that. Self included, because I have it in my collection. It's broke about four times and I think I've tried to reset it so many times. There was ABH highlighter with Amarese recently. Everybody talks about that. I even went online last night when I was like researching this video to see can you get it? It's still out of stock. I mean, it's just crazy. That Amarese highlighter wouldn't look any different to this Sparks highlighter on my cheekbones. You would not know what one I was wearing because realistically they all do the kind of same thing and you don't need more of them. Do you? Do you really need more of them? Foundation. Guys, stop buying foundations that don't suit your skin. I cannot stress that enough. 
foundations expire. That is one of the worst things about foundations. Highlighters you can kind of get away with for a little while. Eyeshadow palettes, yeah, a couple of years you might get away with them. But foundations, no. Like if you open a foundation, you be ready to toss that foundation within the six to 12 month mark. I would not keep a foundation for any longer than that. I tossed out so many foundations before Christmas in a declutter video. Trust me on this one. If you are a collector of makeup, don't go down the route of collecting foundations because it's not a good choice. It's just not, it's a waste of money because you, again, only have one face. I make videos on YouTube, but in the last month, as in January gone by, I'd say I have worn foundation maybe, maybe 10 times. Like that's not that many times in a month. Some weekends I don't go wearing makeup at all. I have, I'd say 30 foundations still in my collection and I've decluttered so many of them and they're gonna all expire before I even will touch them again. I tell you guys, Find maybe two or three foundations that you really, really like. One for everyday wear, one for when you want a little bit more high coverage. And then I would say to go with either a powder foundation, a stick foundation, because then you have like the lighter coverage to mix with the heavier coverage if you want like a medium coverage. And then you have something for like quick on the go, like a powder foundation or a stick foundation, or even invest in a CC cream, a good one, like the It Cosmetics one. And that is all you kind of need, three foundations. I know I'm probably preaching to the choir because some of you are probably looking at me going, I only have three foundations, girl, why have you so many? But this is kind of like a note to myself as well, to stop buying so many foundations, unless it's been asked of you guys for me to do a review and I don't need any more. Primers is another thing that I would say, stop buying so many primers. Again, you have one face. Primers are another thing that I would kind of say expire pretty rapidly, similar to foundations. I don't feel like you get that long out of a primer because it's not a powdered product. So it has an awful lot of obviously oils and things to keep it together like emulsifiers so they separate over time you don't want to be putting something that's expired onto your skin or near your eye or anywhere like that because you'll just cause infections spots breakouts things like that it's not cute so don't buy so many primers how many primers can you wear in a particular week in a particular month in a particular year then kind of calculate how many you need so if you can tell me that you go through a primer a month then keep buying them every month but if you don't go through a primer within six months, then maybe don't buy a primer, you know, within that time frame. like buy it like maybe like four or five months or like when you use it up because they do expire. And I'm not like telling any of you guys out there what to buy and what not to buy. I'm just trying to educate myself and kind of make myself think as well on how many primers do I actually use and do I actually need? For me, this primer is my Holy Grail primer. It is under a tenner, I think it's about six euro. It's really, really affordable. It is the Tensation of Catrice. It does the job. It looks fabulous on my skin. Find one that's most suitable for you, that you like. But if you're trying not to spend so much money on things that you already own, like I am, I'm trying not to buy too many primers because I have like a drawer full of them, then kind of think of the patterns of how you wear your makeup, what primers have you used before? What ones work for you? I mean, influencers are out here recommending like 150 euro primers. You need this, it's life changing. It'll fix your face, it'll make you look beautiful. But realistically, when you're looking at the influencer recommending it, sometimes they might not be completely transparent or honest with you. I always try and be as transparent as possible and I'm sure there's lots of people out there who are like that. So to be honest with primers, Find out what type of skin you have, what you're looking for. You're looking for pore filling, you're looking for something that's hydrating, you're looking for something that's mattifying, you're something, looking for something that's anti-aging. And then buy primers or a primer that suits your skin needs. Like don't go on what somebody is recommending or saying you need because it might not be suitable for you. Going back to the foundations, I might love a foundation but I have ridiculously oily skin. You might be looking at my video with dry skin thinking, wow, she loves that foundation, I need to buy it. Just be kind of like clever about your purchases if you don't want to be buying too many things. And then the final thing I want to be talking about is nude lipsticks. Now this saddens me but it's kind of part of reality. I need to stop buying nude lipsticks. My makeup drawer of lipsticks is absolutely bulging at the seams and I'd say I have about maybe 20 lipsticks in there that are not nude and the rest of them are all nude like pinky nudes and beige nudes and peach nudes and all these different types of nudes. I don't need all those nude lipsticks. They're expiring. Like I know they're, they're sitting in there going off as I'm speaking and I'm just not gonna be wearing them because realistically I'm gonna go back to the same old nude lipsticks that I love, which would be my bow and arrow 
from KVD Beauty. I love the Shrimpton lipstick from MAC. I love my 413 lipstick from Inglot. Beige Tribute from YSL. They're like my four favorite nude lipsticks, but yet I have a drawer full of them, full to the brim of lipsticks, of ones that I think I need, ones that I'm like, oh, if I don't have that, like, I'm gonna look for it. No, you're not, girl, you're not. You don't look for all those nude lipsticks. You just wear those four lipsticks or what's in your makeup bag right now and they're all that you ever wear and they're all that I ever look for. So realistically, this is definitely a note to self not to buy more nude lipsticks. And it goes with the primers and it goes with the foundations. You only need a couple of nudes that suit your skin tone. So for me, I have like four nudes, like I said, that I go between. Depending on how tanned I am, like realistically, I don't get like five shades darker during the summer. I get maybe like two, three shades darker depending on how great our summer is or if I go on holidays. So I only need a nude that is two or three shades darker. And then I need a nude that matches me all the rest of the year. And then maybe a nude that's one shade lighter like this one that I can use just in the center of my lips to like make a pop. And I use this one or Myth, but I'm using this lipstick, which is 413 from Inglot at the moment. So I don't really need Myth. I've used Myth all up. It's completely gone. And to be honest, I was scrambling. I was like, right, I have to get like loads of products back to MAC, the ones that are expired or gone out and get my new Myth lipstick or I run in and get Myth lipstick. But I have a lipstick that's so similar to Myth that I can use until that's gone. And then I can repurchase Myth if I want or buy the 413 lipstick from Inglot, whichever I want, because realistically, it's a lipstick and it's not life changing and it's not gonna be something that I think about in 15 years time been like, oh my God, I'm so delighted I made that investment in all those nude lipsticks because what was I thinking not buying like a nude lipstick for every occasion, every mood. But you know what I would be thinking about? Oh my God, what I, what I think about even now is all those lipsticks that I've wasted money on and that I'm going to be decluttering. That makes me really, really sad because it's waste. It's so wasteful. So that is five products that I don't think you need to buy more of. If you guys enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see like another one kind of like this, because I definitely have thoughts on limited edition collections, holiday collections and themed products. I would like to see maybe a part two of this video. Do let me know because I just couldn't fit it all into this video. It was gonna be long enough. And if you kind of like this different style of video, then yeah, hit me up, let me know. I always read the comments and I'll reply to as many of you guys as I possibly can. Anyway guys, that is all I have to say today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thumbs it up if you did. Let me know what products you're kind of like, no, I don't need to buy any more of them. I have enough. It's enough is enough. I love reading your comments, guys. And I will talk to all of you in my next video. Mwah. Bye.